So you want to get a bigger home and hobby still, but you're not sure which size to get. Let me show you my 100 liter modular still and the different ways of how I use it. Hey everybody, the Stiller Grilling here, one of your favorite home and hobby distillers. Yes, as you can see, the 100 liter still behind me has been broken off and it's, everything is here on the table. So today I'm going to take you through all the different components and how I use my 100 litre still. But first, let's get to the boiler. Alright, so in front of me I've got my 100 litre boiler. I must say by far I've really enjoyed this 100 litre boiler. It really helped me moving from the 13 litre to 100 litre. I was opting for a 50 litre but just thinking of I might get very quickly bored with the 50 litre because it's very smaller. So I opted for a 100 litre and I must say I'm very satisfied. I also got two 100 litre fermentation drums in the garage that I use and sometimes I would somewhat ferment in both of them, do two stripping runs, add the two stripping runs back into the boiler and do my rectifying run. Go have a look here of my whole progress that I did on a stripping and rectifying run. But okay, back to my boiler. Alright, so we've got a 100 litre boiler here. I've got three bottom openings. Two, two inches and one one inch. The one inch I use with the nice drain tap if you want to call it. I really like this one. It's got a lock handle so that when it's open or closed you cannot move it. You have to pull it out and then move it to where you want it. Pull it out and move it. So when it's in a closed position like this and it's inside or on your boiler and you cannot accidentally hit it so that you can all of a sudden drain your contents while you're busy distilling. So yes, very nice uh, drain valve, I like it. All my connections use the tri-clamp that I use to connect with silicone seals. I find it very easy, it makes the modular design very easy and very fun to use. So yes, from my 2 inches, 1 inches, all the way to up to 4 inches, everything tri-clamps, everything silicone seals. For the first two inch that I have at the bottom, I use an end blank that I just use to seal it up, so I'm kind of not using it at the moment. The second, second, the second two inch one I have is for my 4 kilowatt element that I use. It's basically a plain geezer element that I use with my nice this leak control box so that I can adjust the power output to where I want it. The second 2 inch that you can use, or let's say the, the first and the second 2 inches, you can actually use both of them with a heating element. The problem is, with my 4 kilowatt that I have in the complex where I'm staying, I cannot actually utilize the four, full 4 kilowatt at the moment. I actually melted one of the wall sockets on my first attempt to go to the full 4 kilowatts. So I tend to dial down on my power output. I take it about 80, 85 to get it to about a 3.4 kilowatt. Then I use it then as a full blast or a full potential. Obviously when I'm at a different location and the power uh, circuit can handle more, I can use the four kilowatt or I can actually add a secondary four kilowatt and then also heat up much quicker. But for now, yes, I use an M blank on the one and I use my four kilowatt element on the second one. Going up to the top, Got two nice handles that I can lift it and carry it around. Obviously, when it's empty, um, use it when I need to clean it out or throw uh, the rest of the contents out. On the side, I've got my serialized number for my boiler. Um, did it through this to leave. I also use this serialized number to register my boiler so that I can legally distill here in South Africa. If you guys want to know more about how to legally distill in South Africa or register yourself as a legal home and hobby distiller. Go check out a video that I made a while ago, very interesting, just make sure you have some patience for it. Alright, then on top I've got another uh, 2 inch right here on the top. I actually use this with my connection for a thermostat or a thermometer. I've got a nice analog one that I just slot in and also use it with a tri clamp. Sometimes I do like to use a digital one as well, my digital thermometers. Um, I just as well put it in and I put the digital one inside. It gives me a more accurate reading, especially for me liking to do my record keeping, then I can see exactly what the temperature is 
and it's also much faster. Um, analog one is, is very nice, but you tend to really have to look and, and figure out where it is at that moment. I definitely still use my analogs on my 13 liter. So yes, analog, I still like it. Digital, more accurate. Right on top, we've got a nice eight inch hole that we can use to fill up all my products. It's also nice and big for me to clean on the inside so I can make sure that if something may be sticking to the side, I can clean that up very nicely. On the eight inch, I've got my reducer. I can just put it on and then get all the clamps on. So this takes the eight inch to a four inch where I actually use the rest of my equipment. So from here, I then build up my stall to depending on what I have. But for now, I think let's move back to the table and then we quickly have a talk about all the different components that I have. All right, we are back at a table. So yes, so we're gonna take it from the eight inch to four inch reducer. And then I'm gonna talk to you what else I do have on the table. So from the four inch, I like to use all my different T sections that I have. All of them that you can see around here is exactly the same. It's four inches with six inch in height as well as a four inch side glass that you can also remove and also clean the glass if you want to. Um, very nifty little ones. All of them just sits right on top. I still use a silicone seal that I just place on the bottom and then add it to the top and then use my tri clamps to connect them straight to my reducer depending on what configuration I want to make. Most of the time, I don't use all eight of the sections that I have. Um, if I want to connect it all together, I can make an eight plate column. But for most of the time, I can use between four to six, depending on what configuration I want to run. So with the T sections, I use them my bubble trays as well. I've got nice four inch bubble cap trays. Uh, as you can see, five top caps and one down comer. Check out this video where I talk more about bubble caps and perforated plates. Uh, but yes, I add them right inside and use a tri clamp with the next section to seal it off and then build my stall. Then I can know that on each individual section I can have a bubble cap or bubble tray to use with my rest of my stall. Sometimes I do like to use the 4 inch glass section. Um, as you can see, I still have the perforated plate on. I did some gin uh, a while ago, so that's why it's still there. But I can take it out and actually put a bubble cap tray right where the perforated plate is as well. But yes, my glass section, I just like it because it gives you a clear and a nice look of how the still is performing, especially when the vapor is starting to form up. And especially if you have a bubble cap right at the perforated plate, you can actually see nicely how the bubbles will start and when it's really going you can nicely see how the bubble caps really do 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 work and do their job so yes that's my four inch i use this four inch with the 13 liter still as well that's actually where i got it from i didn't bought it with the 100 liter still but because it's still four inch and with the modular modular design it's much easier just to add it on and then use it with the rest so i'm just going to put this aside for now so what else? All right, so from the four inch, when I do build up my tower, right at the top, I do got my reflux condenser or deflagonator, if they also want to call it that. It's a shotgun type, as you can see all the different holes. So your liquid will flow on the shell side, on the inside, that's these two, that's your inlet and outlet. And on the tube side on that's going through will be your vapors that you want to condense. So this one in effect will sit right at the last T section. You will put it right at the top and it will basically act as a, like I said, a reflux condenser if you want to push all the liquid back down. Sometimes I actually use it just for height. Um, I, I'll show you now with the condenser. The condenser is a bit long, so I cannot really build a very short still. I have to build a longer one and then I actually add this one just for height and I don't connect the water at all. But that's my defagonator. So from the defagonator, let's bring it back. So from my defagonator, I've got my reducer, my four inch to my two inch. At the back, you also see I've got a thermocouple that, that I use with the digital thermometers that I have here. So I will actually add in one here. So 
when I do my runs, I can then clearly see what is my temperature right at the top of my still, as well as what's my temperature right at the boiler. And those two I can compare. Especially when I'm doing a high reflux run, I can actually look at the temperature and know exactly what is my percent alcohol that's going to come out here where I'm currently at. So I would intend to open and close more on my cooling water on the defragonator or reflux condenser to see what my temperature is to know what will my alcohol content be that's coming out at the bottom. So from my reducer, I've got my 180 degree 2 inch bend. I really like it, um, it's a nice solid one, I can just add it right on top, it's well silicone seal with a tri-clamp. I have seen two, uh, let's say, I see some guys that have, have it split, uh, in the sense it's got a one 90 degree and a second 90 degree. What I actually like about those is that you can then twist it. So it's typically for me that I have to, I only have this angle that I have to work with, so coming but down back to my still, especially with the longer condenser, I'm limited to my height. If you have that two split, two 90 degree splits and you can twist it, you can easily have your condenser going uh, more skew or more at an angle down and then you don't have to build up your tower as high as you need to. But yes, this is the one I have and like I said, I'm still using it, I still really like it. What I tend to do during my um, rum runs or a nice whiskey run where I want to strip out more of the sulfates. I would use my defragonator right at the top. I would get some copper mesh, add it together or put it right inside my reducer, add it there. And then as well, I would use smaller uh, or, or more smaller rolled um, copper meshes and I would put it right inside of my 180 degree bend. So I would have it full and then when I connect it, then I know that with the bubble caps or bubble trays itself, they would have copper that will trap some of the sulfates and then I have copper inside as well as in my bed. So that I can make sure that if there is any sulfates, I can do remove it and I like to use it. They do tend to discolor with time, uh, clean it up if you want to, that's no problem. If you've got new ones, new, new ones as well. Uh, my bubble caps, uh, trays as well, I tend to clean it every now and again. I think I'll make a nice video of how we clean our copper bits a bit later. So alright, from my 180 degree bend, I've got first up just a extending pipe. You can see it's straight and through, nothing inside. When I do use a longer tower, especially for a high reflux run, then I use this extender to bring it back down so that yeah, it's just much easier to get all my products capturing at a lower height. Sometimes I would actually add this on the 4 inch side to give me a bit more height, then use the 180 degree bend and then bring it down with the condenser itself. Now let's go to this condenser I've been talking. It's a quite heavy condenser. It's in total 600 millimeters long. It's a very nice also shotgun type. Um, cooling water coming in and out, so yes, cooling water again on the shell side and on the tube side you'll have your product that comes through. If I do a stripping run, this big condenser really helps to run a very hot stripping run, so I can do a very fast stripping run. Unfortunately again, where I'm staying, um, where the water pressure is not that great, so even though I can maybe bump up on my kilowatts on my heating element, I am restricted to cooling water as well. Now yes, I can definitely make a plan of cooling water instead of just using the plain tap water as a source of cooling water. I can have a drum with a bigger pump that can bring up it, uh, bring up the pressure and also then have a faster stripping run. But for me, how I'm using it, I'm quite satisfied. But yes, the long condenser really helps with a stripping run. So from the condenser, we move over to our parrot or first our search arrester. It takes also a reducer that takes it from the 2 inch to a 1 inch, also using tri-clamps to connect them. You will see there's holes on the side, that's the surge arrestor part. That just helps to help with the oxygen flow as well as that it doesn't suck and make a vacuum. That air can actually then suck inside here and help it with the still. And then we have our parrot, it's nice and long and big parrot, I really enjoy it. Um, parrot. As you guys might not know yet, as you can see there's a 
opening there in the inside and then an overfill. So what temp typically will happen is your condenser will condense your vapors. It will fall all the way through down to the bottom. As you have your valve at the bottom closed, your power will start to fill up uh, on the inside. There you will have your alcohol meter bobbing. So you can have like a online or a continuous alcohol reading as you are distilling and then it will overflow and then from the the second part where it overflows it will then fall down into the neck of the parrot and then you can collect it uh, in any container you have here at the bottom it's a very nifty one i have seen nice ones that people create themselves especially if they have a, a type of a pot still and they don't really have this modular design so you can have different type of parrots i just really like this one the, the design of it and then right at the bottom, yes, you have your parrot drain, especially when you start and you want to first take off some heads. I like to keep it open and drain at the bottom until I have collected my four shots on my head. And then I would close it and then wait for this parrot to fill up. The parrot itself um, on the inside it can take between 220 to 230 milliliters of extra liquid as well. So sometimes even when I do my runs and I'm done and I'm happy with what I have, I would actually drain the parrot as well to have it part of my contents that I have at the end. So yes, looking around the table, I think I have covered everything um, that I look. Oh yeah, as you can see, I've, I've got some of the sections built over here. Sometimes when I don't want to use the bubble caps, I use it as a pipe. Um, then I just, has a, there's a fancy pipe, a four inch pipe. Especially when I do stripping runs, stripping runs, I don't use the bubble caps, I only use the pipes itself. Um, but I think let's move back to the boiler and then I will quickly run through some of the different configurations I use for different styles of products that I want to make. Alright, we're back to the boiler. Now before I start the boiler, I want to show you something. So this is my dolly trolley. Yes, it has got a, a molasses leak that I have there. This was one day when I was actually pouring and then I missed pour a bit and I spilled it a bit. As you can see there's a nice crack in the middle. Yes, when I first built my dolly trolley I didn't have a support at the back and then I broke it. So I also learned to make sure you have got a nice support. Um, obviously I need to maybe modify it again or at least make a secondary one that I know is a bit better and stronger. But this dolly trolley really works well, um, especially when your still is built to a height that you want it. It really makes it easy to move around. So I'm actually going to slip it down underneath the boiler so that when I do build it and I'm done for the day, I can just slide it back into the spot that I normally put it. So that I don't have to dis disassemble everything again and put it back and then assemble again. As you can see, it really makes it easy for moving around. I can move it in any direction. I've had it with a full reflux connection, all my trays, all my plates, as well full of about 80 um, liters of product inside. I've moved it around. So I know that my dolly trolley is definitely sufficient and does the job very well. I'm quite happy with it. So yes, all right. So first up, let's say you want to use it as a pot still. You can use it as a pot still or as a stripping run. It's very much similar way that I can set it up. So we'll start with the reducer um, all the way from the 8 inch to the 4 inch. That one we will just add to the still and then build from there. I would tend to decide on how I want to use it. Um, let me show you what I mean about the condenser. So the condenser with my 180 degree is quite long now if i'm going to add the parrot as well it takes it up longer so i need to make sure that my connections on this side is high enough for me to add my condenser as well as the parrot at the bottom if i don't want to add the parrot i can just add the surge arrestor at the bottom with a valve that i can easily operate as well then i don't have to build it as high i will tend to use that configuration when i do a stripping run but when I do a postal run, I would like to have the parrot on as well just to see what is my alcohol content as I'm distilling it. But let's quickly have a bolt and then we'll see how it looks. Okay, so we started off with our reducer and the first T-section and I've got no bubble caps inside. So it's still just a straight pipe coming straight from the boiler. I will then use my silicone seal that I use in between 
as you can also see I have this one connected as a pipe as well so I know from my past experience that with four T sections I will have a good enough height with my top extender as well so I would then add these and connect them yes obviously normally I don't connect from the back I connect from the front but uh, it doesn't matter at the moment it's just for demonstration purposes so I will then connect it here from here I will then use my another seal with my reducer I like to have my reducers tempo set at the back as I'm trying to always have all my cables and piping work coming to the back uh, just to keep it a bit neat but you can have any way you want if you are the ceiling there's no right or wrong way to the sill it's all about having fun while you're doing it so from here on you you can have different choices you can rather have more t-sections added to the top if you don't want to use a two inch reducer but i tend to like to use my two inch reducer just to help a bit with the height I have already connected it with a seal and a tri clamp to my 180 degree bend. So I will then use a, another seal right at the top with my extender. It's also still just on a pipe configuration, nice and open. If you really want to, you can actually add some uh, copper mesh to your piping as well. Just might add a small type of a perforated plate here at the bottom just to make sure that you keep your um, pipe or your, your copper mesh inside I have seen guys as well that almost use this type of piping or a 4 inch pipe with packing inside if you want to do a more uh, high reflux run uh, packing is also very versatile uh, it tend to you don't have to add that many plates if you have got a lot of packing you can also have exactly the same results of a high reflux run coming to a 93 to a 94% alcohol content that you distill out. All right, so with my extender and my 180 degree bend, we come now to the condenser itself. Yet again, as the, like I said, I like to keep my cooling pipes at the back. Depending on how I do my run on a specific day, I would then move my pipes maybe to the side if I know that I'm gonna use it outside the window, but it just depends on how you want to use it. Uh, let me just get this connected and you see I am quite short so sometimes it can get quite high and then I have a small step ladder that I use to connect the rest of the piping going up so from here we will then connect our parrot you will see it's just just gonna make it right there it's actually in such a way that I tend to not really be able to use my bottom drain of the parrot but uh, you know you, you make do with what you have um, so sometimes I would then rather just say flip it around to the edge like that then I at least know that when I drain I can still drain and have it there but and then on this side I will collect my product but this is in a sense a way that I can use it as a pot still that I have all my product at the bottom run right through and collect my product here if I would do a stripping run I do it basically the same way sometimes I would intend to remove two of the T sections and the parrot as well and I'll just take it straight from the surge director as well so yeah this is my first configuration pot still or stripping run so pot still is something that you really want the aroma a very strong aroma product that has maybe a lower alcohol content um, think of a nice brandy or a, or a nice rum a very strong rum if you want to say make a more lighter rum or a lighter brandy then I tend to add about two to three plates depending on what I want to make so for the plates I would actually start right here at the bottom sometimes if I know that I'm not going to add all of the plates together I tend to start here it's easier for me to actually look inside straight more or less into the boiler that if it maybe wants to foam or make a boil over that I can actually see exactly what's going on straight into the boiler so I would then skip the first one and then go straight to the second one for my trays so for the trays I would just add my tray to where I want it get my second T section up and then build my store from there I would also tend to make sure that as I add my 
caps inside my, my bubble trays inside to make sure that I alternate the down comers. When you leak liquid dust settle on the plate and it does come down, my first down comer was like this, so I would tend to move it 180 degrees so the down comers on the other side. So I know that one plate is this side, one plate is that side. Because all your liquid will now start to accumulate on your tray and then will fall down your down comer and you don't want it to all fall down in the same line. I like to make sure that when the second down comer falls, it falls on the plate and it does its job. Alright, so I will add it there, get my silicone seal and then add another T-section and build it from there. So we've got two bubble caps in so long and three T-sections. I tend to sometimes always make sure that they'll line up more properly. Uh, I'm going to loosen up here again and make sure that when I do build my, my, my still or my configuration, I try to keep all the windows to the same side so that when I do build it, I can see everything nicely and also see how the bubble caps actually work. All right, I can decide now whether I want to add another T section on top here with a bubble cap or maybe just straight from here put another T section without anything in between as a, a type of a pipe and then solve my reducer 180 degree bend back to my uh, parrot again. Uh, this will, like I said, will be a, a lighter aroma type of product that typically think of still a brand new or a, a rum. If you want to go for a whiskey, I would intend to add more bottle caps. So I would then say definitely add another one here and even I would then split these apart and put another one here. I will have at least four trays if I want to make a whiskey. But for now I am just going to add the third one in for a demonstration. Yet again my down comers on this side as I know the previous one was on the other side. So I'm going to keep the down comer to this side. Just make sure my silicone seal is nice. Add my sections that I want. What I enjoy about the modular side of this whole stills is that you can build it any way you want. Depending on what you want to make that specific day or the product that you want to create, you can build it any way you want. Have it with two trays, four trays, up to eight trays. I've seen guys with 100 liter stills that take it up to 12 to 14 trays. So there's no limit of what you want to make or how high you have to make. It just depends on where you are and where you say, if you reach the ceiling or do you have a more open space. Um, I actually want to add the side gloss or show you guys how I add the side gloss in here. So I'm going to take this off and also remove this. Like I said, you can keep your bubble cap here if you want to. What I then tend to do, I configure my side gloss in different ways. Um, check out this video where I actually disassemble the side gloss better and show how I install the bubble cap tray, especially where the perforated plate is at the moment. But sometimes when I'm a bit lazy, I just tend to flip it around and actually just add my side gloss straight to the bubble cap so I can still utilize the bubble cap as it is there. Have my side gloss here so that I can actually see how it performs. Get my tri clamp out and then just fasten it together with the rest of the still. And then I know I can actually have a nice visual reference of how my still is performing. Um, I can still nicely see how the bubble caps perform and see how they boil. And as well is if I might be starting to flood, I can now easily see on a side gloss how it looks. But it's always easy to see on this side as well when it floods. Um, I did a video a while ago on flooding and how to handle it. Go check that out if you guys want to. So let's say if you want to do whiskey now, we've got one, two, three. Then I'll add a fourth one. Say put a fourth bubble cap there and then add the rest of my still. Add a reducer. 180 degree bend and then come down to your parrot. I don't tend to use my reflux condenser or defragonator with my whiskey or when I'm making whiskey. I might just use it for height but I do not necessarily connect the water on it as well as I just want the product to come through and come out at the other side. If I want to make a gin I can still use the side glass as well with the perforated plate. I will then obviously remove my all my bubble caps and then use it as a stripping still in a sense or a pot still. I would flip the glass chamber around so that the perforated plate at the bottom is here. So that when I do add a gin basket, uh, 
when I do add a gin bag, it obviously will sit on the perforated plate and it will not fall down to the bottom. Um, I've never really did a gin run with a 100 litre. I tend to do smaller gin runs and then I use the 30 litre still, but actually I still use this glass chamber with the perforated plate and a gin bag. Alright, so what do we have got left? Last is the vodka run or a high reflux run. So I'm actually going to remove my glass chamber because I actually want to build this still as I would normally just uh, put it away when I'm not using it. So yes, let's get back to what a high reflux run. So for a high reflux run, I like to use all my bubble caps. Um, I would use all eight in the all eight T section that I have. And sometimes I would even add the glass section to have a ninth T section or a ninth section in as well with a nine, ninth bubble cap as well. But for now, I'm only going to add the rest that I have. I'm going to add this one here just for demonstration purposes as well as the rest of my T-sections. I might build or pre-build a bit and then add everything together to save on height and then I'll move it back a bit so you guys can see the whole still together. So I'm just going to add this one for now. So it might be a bit skew. I see this one looks a bit skew, <laughs> but it's okay. Let's maybe straighten up just a little bit. There we go. All right, so let me quickly pre-build some of the other sections and then we'll add them together. So, all right, so what I have got here then, I've got the last three T-sections. And like I said, if I want to do a high reflux run, I would then add bubble caps at each in the, uh, intersection as well, as well as this one right on top as well. Then obviously I will use my defragonator, my reflux condenser that's right here. Connect it with water and make sure that it's open when I start my still. Come to my reducer. Yet again, I've got my thermocouple right at the back where I connect my digital temperature thermometers so that I can see exactly what my still doing right at the top. Going to my 180 degree bend and then I've added my extender pipe to this side. As the height now gets really high, uh, I tend to use the extender part as well. And then from here on, I will connect my condenser and the parrot going straight to the bottom. So let me quickly put this onto the top of the still so you guys can have an idea of how high it actually goes. So yes, obviously connected now, you can't even see the reducer anymore. So I'm going to move it back. You can actually see how my dolly trolley actually also works. So let me move it back to where I normally stash it. Okay, at least you guys can now see uh, more or less where my reflux condenser reducer 180 degree bend as well as my extending pipe. Lastly, I will then connect the condenser with my parrot as well. Uh, so let's get it connected. All right, so there we go. So for a high reflux run, all eight T-sections are in and all eight the bubble caps are also in with my extender on top of the condenser, condenser, parrot, and then I'll have my run. Um, I tend to leave it like assembled like this as well when I just pack it away when I'm done using it and then it more or less stands right here in the living room. It's a very nice talking point as well if people walk in and the first thing they see is this. I had some guys asking me if it's a flute and no it's not a flute it's a still but it's very fun to talk about exactly what it is. I hope you guys enjoyed and I have a better idea of how the 100 liter is and how versatile it is and how the different ways how you can use it. Um, I, you don't necessarily have to have eight T sections. You can go away with four and even have a bit of packing and still have a very high reflux run if you want to. Just make sure you do have got your defragonator. It really helps to with the high reflux runs or you want to have reflux in your store. That's all that I have for you guys today. I hope you guys enjoyed it and maybe we'll make you decide to get a hundred liter if you want to upscale a bit. Um, for home and hobby distilling, I feel 100 litre um, is about it. Um, if you really make a lot of product, you can have a bigger one. Um, I have mentioned before, I know a guy that personally has a 200 litre home still and that he built himself. Um, very cool still. I enjoyed checking it out when I was with him. So it doesn't mean that 100 litre is the biggest home still you have to have. You can have bigger ones, but for me at this moment, I enjoy my 100 litre. I actually started to be run out of space where I put my products so I actually need to get some more containers to put away my product but this is what I have and I hope you guys enjoyed it 
give me a like and comment down the bottom if you want to know anything else. And as always, remember to be awesome, to be kind and be yourself. Cheers.